when infrastructure fails, when communication goes out, when the world goes silent, ham radio operators are prepared. Introducing the Ham Radio Prep Emergency Communications Course. Hi, I'm Jim N4BFR, the lead instructor at Ham Radio Prep. And today, I'm excited to introduce the Ham Radio Prep Emergency Communications Course. The FCC has given the Ham Radio Service a mission. That includes providing emergency communications. With a ham radio license, you have the privileges needed to communicate with your family, your local community, and even around the world in emergency situations. But actually communicating during an emergency requires a unique complement of skills. It is so much more than just plugging in a radio, which is why we've designed this course to teach you the skills needed to become an effective amateur radio emergency communicator. This course is designed to start you off with public service activities around your town. Here, you'll learn basic skills and communications best practices with real examples. Then, it expands to statewide and international communications over HF. You'll also learn how to create a personal communication plan for you and your family. Our team is bringing more than three decades of experience in amateur radio to this course. You'll also learn from several other team members and subject matter experts who will share their years of knowledge in an easy to understand format. Expect to learn how to participate in public service communications events, how to actively communicate on ham radio nets, which equipment to select to make sure you have the right gear at the right time and know how to use it. We'll also brief you on creating a personal emergency communication plan operating during natural disasters, and working with MCOM groups alongside disaster relief agencies like FEMA. There's training on the incident command system and much more. By completing this course, you'll gain the critical skills needed to effectively communicate during events and emergencies, ensuring the safety of yourself, your family, and your community. Before taking this class, we recommend having at least an amateur radio technician level license, and general license is ideal. If you need to get or upgrade your license, sign up for our ham radio prep license classes. Ham radio is so much more than just getting licensed. It's about getting active, getting involved, and being prepared. So if you're ready to take the next step to become a prepared public service and emergency communicator, sign up for the Ham Radio Prep Emergency Communications course at hamradioprep.com. I'm Jim N4BFR saying 73, and I'll see you in lesson one. What's the best thing about the new emergency communications course? I like the way it steps people through basically never having operated before, from choosing a radio to programming a handheld, to getting involved on the net, to helping with a communications group, and then on doing things like HF and being ready to work with groups like Aries, Racies, and Oxcom. Well, why is this course important for the ham radio community? We talk to a bunch of people who do emergency communications, and we really feel like there's an opportunity for people to understand the basics better in a way that they can grasp it. So one of the things we do at Ham Radio Prep is teach things in a number of different ways. We don't just hand you a book or have you watch a video. We've got video lessons, talk to experts, have quizzes, have text lessons. So whatever way you learn, you're gonna get the information that you need to really grasp and understand it. What are some of the coolest things from the course that people should be excited about? I think uh, if you never worked digital before, we're going to teach you how to do HF wind link. So it's, it's really complicated to get all those stuff going on. But once you get going, it's a lot of fun. And those same emergency skills would then translate to doing things like FTA or PSK31, where you can go off and have a good time operating digitally. We had a lot of fun creating a lesson about how you would operate on the net during an event. 
So you're actually going to get to see step by step and hear the things you would normally hear on the net because we have this experience that we've done these before. The other thing I think is going to be really cool is there will be a complete lesson that takes you behind the scenes of a public service event. So James and I are going to go and be part of the world's largest 10K and participate both as net control and on the course. And you'll get to see those experiences before you go out and try it yourself. How does this course fit into somebody who's really new? So there's two things here. I think ham radio is the choice partially because the FCC wants it to be. So if you look at what the FCC has assigned to smaller groups that are free over the airwaves, you're talking stuff like GMRS or CB. Those are really limited. So they can help, but they can help in a very narrow area. Ham radio operators have privileges from DC to daylight, right? So they can operate really long wave, short wave to get the message out. They can operate via satellites to get the message out. And having those skills is really what people are gonna need in an emergency because there's the versatility there. Okay, I can't talk to somebody across the street on my handheld, fine. I can use an HF radio and I can make a contact and maybe even I need to go from Miami to Atlanta to Houston to get a contact in, but those skills are there and available and that network of people is there available to do it. And that's just not something you can do on GMRS or typically on CB. Uh, the other thing I would say is that it's licensed versus unlicensed, right? So people, wh why should I get a license if there's an emergency I can communicate anytime I want, right? Because that's what the law says. Yes and no. The law is really specific about when you can communicate without a license and what you can do. And we cover that a little bit in the course. The point here being that if you don't pick up the stuff, if you don't learn the skills, if you don't understand how to program a handheld or how to program in a radio, or if you don't understand the difference between FM and single sideband at the time of an emergency, you're not gonna be able to communicate effectively. And I think when we talk about not just emergency communications, but an effective emergency communicator. It's that person that knows how to bring all these skills to bear and use the right skill at the right time to make this work when stuff happens. Anything else? What else? Um, I like that the fact that we're doing this as a team. So you're not gonna see just me. You're gonna see uh, uh, can 4 neh James. You're gonna see Max and 4 ml And you're gonna see people who are active in their specialties in the ham radio prep emergency communications groups. We talked to people from Saturn. We talked to people from Skywarn. We talked to people from Aries. We know people who do marathons and put those on every time. Those are real skills and real experiences that we're able to pull into this course. So it's not just something we made up. It's something we have collaborated on with a lot of different people.